Uh, welcome to part two of this tutorial on OLEDs. In this part, we will explain the operating mechanism of OLEDs, or in other words, how do they work. We will show the current voltage or electrical characteristics and the luminance characteristics of OLEDs and we will introduce the two important performance parameters of OLEDs. These are the external quantum efficiency and the efficacy. Okay, next we explain the operating mechanism of OLEDs. That means how can we obtain uh, photon emission or light when the OLED device is biased by a voltage source or a current source. The first thing to understand is that inside this uh, organic layer there are typically very very few charge carriers. That is because these organic materials in an OLED are not doped. They cannot conduct current easily. So as a result of that, the first stage in the organic EL process is to bring in the charge carriers into the OLED. And this is represented by uh, one and two in the schematic diagram on the top right. We can introduce or inject electrons and holes into the blue organic layer by applying a voltage bias of the right polarity. So we can inject electrons from the cathode and holes from the anode. Now once inside the organic layer, the electron and the hole will experience an electric field. And this is illustrated by the energy diagram below the uh, schematic diagram of the device. Uh, by rigid bands, what we mean is that the organic layer behaves more or less like an insulator and the tilted bands show that there is an electric field. So as a result, both the electron and the hole undergoes what they call drift transport. So they are being pulled along by an electric field and because they have opposite uh, signs of charge, the electron and the hole will move in opposite directions. So eventually, the electron and the hole will encounter one another, and they will form a neutral excited state called the Franco exciton. The Franco exciton is one of three types of excitons and for organic materials we normally only encounter the Franco type. These are very small uh, sized uh, excitons. And in the uh, diagram at the top the Franco exciton is represented by the symbol uh, S1. The reason why we use S1 is because there are actually two subcategories of Franco excitons. They are called the singlet type and the triplet type. And it is the singlet type which is important for EL. In other words, the reason why we get light emission is because of these singlet Franco excitons. And the singlet Franco excitons are designated by S1. 
below the S1 uh, symbol, we see an arrow. And this is showing the last step in the EL process. This singlet Franco exciton is not stable. After some time, it will decay by recombination, and the energy of the singlet Franco exciton is converted to a photon. And this photon is represented by the symbol uh, H mu in the diagram. And the photon can escape from this device through the uh, anode layer and the glass substrate. And this is the reason why we can observe the, uh, <coughs> the light from the OLED. In this uh, slide, we show the current voltage luminance characteristic of OLEDs. After we fabricate the device, we must perform electrical and optical measurements. And the results are usually <coughs> displayed via these current voltage characteristics and the luminance voltage characteristics. Uh, as shown in the schematic diagram, we are plotting the current voltage and the luminance voltage characteristic uh, on the same uh, graph. And the nonlinear curve on the left is referring to the current voltage characteristic. So one important uh, point to note is that the current voltage characteristic is diode-like. That means it's not symmetrical. So in other words, if we apply a forward or positive voltage to the OLED, the current will increase quite quickly with the voltage. But if we change the voltage to a negative polarity, the current remains low, and it doesn't change much with the voltage. And so uh, this is what is called a ratifying behavior or a diode-like uh, characteristic. The curve on the right side of this schematic diagram is referring to the light emission or luminance from the device. And as we can see, when we apply a positive voltage or forward bias, we will get emission from the device when a threshold voltage is exceeded. But if we apply a reverse bias, then because of the ratifying or diode-like characteristic, we get no emission. So in order to turn on the OLED and observe light, we must forward bias the device, or in other words, we apply a positive voltage to the anode and a negative voltage to the cathode. Next, we describe the important performance parameter for an OLED, and this is called the external quantum efficiency. The external quantum efficiency, or the EQE, is defined simply as the number of photons which were generated within the OLED that can actually escape or emerge from the device. And that is divided by the number of electron hole pairs injected. In other words, it is simply a ratio. It's a ratio of the number of photons that can escape from the device per electron hole pairs injected. So how do we obtain the external quantum efficiency? We can obtain the external quantum efficiency by using two other efficiencies. And this is shown on the 
first equation. The two other efficiencies are the extraction efficiency, eta extract, and the internal quantum efficiency, eta internal. The eta internal is determined by the materials and also the device characteristics, and the eta extraction is given by the uh, second equation is 1 over 2n squared, where n is the refractive index, an optical property of this uh, organic emissive layer. And for some time, uh, people believe that the maximum value of eta extract is only 0.2, but more recent research has shown that it can be as high as 0.3. So what is this eta extract? And this is illustrated by the diagram on the, uh, on the right. Suppose uh, a photon is emitted from the uh, right hand side. The photon can be emitted in any direction. If the incident angle and this is the angle between the, the ray and the perpendicular line, the perpendicular direction. If that angle is too large, we will get what is called total internal reflection. That means the light is trapped inside the OLED. And of course, it cannot escape and we cannot see that photon. In order to escape from the device, from a higher index material to air, the photon has to follow a path with a smaller angle of incidence. And so one example would be that bold uh, black path, which shows that you can get photon extraction. And if you measure the number of photons which are extracted, and you divide by the number of electron hole pairs injected, you will obtain the EQE. Next, we will describe another very important performance parameters for <coughs> OLEDs and the white OLED. And this is called the efficacy. The efficacy is also sometimes referred as the power efficiency. This parameter is important because it is widely used by the industry to evaluate the energy efficiency of these devices. It is of importance to uh, low power devices. So how do we obtain the efficacy? What we do is we use an, an equipment called the integrating sphere. And this equipment can be used to measure the total amount of light or luminous flux emitted by the device. So <clears throat> essentially what the uh, integrating sphere can do is it will integrate the luminance from the device over area and over the solid angle. And it will be able to measure the luminous flux. The luminous flux is measured by a unit called a lumen, or LM. And this is basically, uh, for the layman, this is basically the total amount of light which is as perceived by the human eye. If we divide the luminous flux by the electrical power, that is the product of the voltage and the current applied to the OLED, we will get the efficacy. So unlike the EQE, the efficacy has a unit and this is the lumen per watt. So as mentioned earlier, this uh, lumen per watt 
is important for any OLED, but especially for the white OLED using solid state lighting. So we reached the end of this tutorial and we summarize what we have covered in the contents. In this tutorial, we have introduced the basics of OLED technology. We have discussed the organic materials used in OLED devices, and we explain why they have semiconducting properties. And we also explain the device structure of OLEDs. Furthermore, we have described two important performance parameters, the EQE and the efficacy, which are generally applied to OLED devices.